Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video before you jump into the comments section and start accusing me of posting a video with a clickbait title let me assure you that title is absolutely true news broke late this afternoon that it is the end of Ubuntu as we know it take a good look at the unity desktop ladies and gentlemen because it is going away this story ended up in my news feed this afternoon. It was on OMG Ubuntu, and the headline reads Ubuntu 18.04 to ship with GNOME desktop, not Unity, and goes on to quote a blog post from Ubuntu founder Mark Shuttleworth, who states that Canonical is to end its investment in Unity 8, Mir, Ubuntu for phones and tablets, and will no longer pursue its goal of convergence. When I first saw this, I thought it was an April Fool's joke. Since I first saw it, I've gotten confirmation that it is not, and this is the direction that Ubuntu will be going in. This is a huge deal in the Linux world. This is a bombshell that has been dropped on the Linux world. Even if Ubuntu is not your favorite distro, it is probably the most influential distribution of Linux next to Red Hat and a lot of other distributions keep an eye on what Ubuntu is doing. The Ubuntu release cycle is usually the pivot point for new technologies to be introduced even in other distributions so this is something to keep in mind. Now for those of you who are new to the Linux world I'm going to take a couple of minutes here. I'm going to give you just a little bit of history so that you understand where we're at and why this is such a big deal. So let me jump down here to this Ubuntu Mate 16.04 machine running. And this is running the Mate desktop. The Mate desktop is a fork of GNOME 2. And GNOME 2 was a wildly popular desktop in the early 2000s for Linux. When Ubuntu was first released in 2004, it came with the GNOME 2 desktop. And it did that all the way up until Ubuntu 10.10. And so the Ubuntu Mate developers themed Ubuntu Mate right out of the box to look a lot like Ubuntu 10.10 because that was a really wonderful distribution of the Ubuntu operating system and everything worked nicely. And then everything just went to hell real fast. A lot of things happened in 2010. The GNOME project decided that they were going to change direction entirely and they introduced the GNOME 3 desktop. And this is a screenshot of GNOME 3 in the expo mode where it shows you the little launcher over here in the left-hand side, all of the windows in expo mode, and then the desktop switcher. When GNOME 2 is not in expo mode, you get a blank desktop with all of the icons turned off by default. And this semi-useless bar across the top that you can't do anything with other than look at the time and have a few buttons on uh, that is the GNOME desktop and the GNOME 3 desktop when it was first introduced was not only radically different to the point where it scared the hell out of a lot of people it was a disaster it didn't work very well there was a lot of bugs in GNOME 3 when it first came along and so the Developers at Ubuntu reacted to GNOME 3 by coming up with their own desktop called Unity. This also happened with the Linux Mint folks who were also using an enhanced version of GNOME 2. They had developed their own menu for that. And they decided that they were going to go in a completely different direction. And that is when the Mint folks introduced the Cinnamon desktop. Now, the Unity desktop and the Cinnamon desktop are both based on GNOME 3. Essentially what they did was they took the core of GNOME 3 and then they built very different looking desktops around it. So this 
met their goal of continuing what they wanted to do with the desktop environment, but still kept the GNOME core applications and the base of the desktop. And you might be wondering why Ubuntu came up with such a crazy idea, the Unity desktop. Where did this come from, this craziness, uh, this thing with the launcher over here, and they have the dash, which is this little, this is how you interact with your applications and a lot of your files on the machine. The Unity desktop has a lot of keyboard shortcuts in it that you can actually run the desktop from the keyboard. Well, the idea came along mainly because in the late 2000s, there was this idea going around. There was a famous interview. I don't remember exactly what year this happened uh, with Bill Gates from Microsoft and Steve Jobs from Apple. They were together on the same stage. And they were talking about the fact that the traditional desktop and laptop computer was going away and that everybody was going to be going to tablets and touch screens and smartphones. And it could very well be argued all these years down the road that for a certain segment of the people who use technology, that would be true because a lot of people get what they get done on the internet, you know, social media, videos, all that stuff. They do it on tablets these days. They don't need a computer and they don't feel the need for one. However, there is also a large segment of computer users who create things. They spend a lot of time at their computer. They edit video. They do graphics. They do things like that. And they need a real computer to do that. They need a keyboard. They need a touchpad or a mouse. They need a way to interact with this machine. So uh, while the laptop and the desktop computer form factors may be uh, less in demand these days, there is certainly no shortage of companies that are building hardware that will do those things. And as a matter of fact, for Linux, there are more companies that produce Linux computers now than ever before. We've got System76, Dell is doing it, HP is doing it, and many other small companies have come along. And a lot of those companies ship with ta -da, Ubuntu, with the Unity desktop. And so going back to this whole thing about uh, going into a mobile reality, there was a presentation that was done shortly before the Unity desktop was introduced where Mark Shuttleworth went through all of the basics of what was going to make it different and why they did what they did. So it's kind of curious because the, about this time was when everybody was going to a wide screen on their computer. So it was considered uh, that the horizontal real estate was more precious than the vertical real estate, or actually the other way around. Vertical real estate was more precious up and down than side to side. So this is why the Unity desktop moved the traditional taskbar or launcher bar from the bottom to this side. Now, like GNOME 3, Unity has a bar at the top that you can never make go away. But when you open up an application with the Unity desktop, so let's open up a file manager, uh, this will become your menu bar, a la Mac OS X. Now, I always switch that to where my menu appears with the window. I'm just used to that. But the idea was is that when you full screened an application, that this would become the menu bar, the title bar. They would all merge and see now you have all of this real estate on the screen that's devoted to your full screen application. That's because the Unity desktop was originally designed. It came from an idea that was supposed to be on netbooks, which were little tiny laptop computers. And so they've adapted it to everything else. And along with this, they started this idea of convergence. And convergence meant that they were going to come up with an operating system that was going to be able to be used on desktops, laptops. They were also going to be able to use it on phones and tablets and any other kind of device that came along. And part of that was also getting these devices to communicate with one another 
so that the data would be shared. This is something they've been working on in the background for years. They actually introduced the Ubuntu Touch, the phones. They, they sold them for a little while. They didn't catch on. They never really got out of a beta stage because they didn't have apps for them. There was all kinds of issues with them. And I always thought that was a good idea because in the mobile space, there really isn't a whole lot of open source. There's people that have tried to do it. There's been all kinds of ideas around this, but nobody has been able to pull it off. And I really thought Ubuntu would have the clout to do that. So if they have dropped doing that, that means they've essentially given the market to Android and Apple's iOS. And that's a little bit sad. Hopefully somewhere down the road, somebody will pick that up. Now, as far as the Unity desktop is concerned, I've never been one to hate it. I've been using it continuously since 2012 when I installed Ubuntu 1204. Uh, so, therefore, uh, you, uh, you know, some people out there, you may not like it. You might have thought it was the worst thing that ever happened. I actually have had it running ever since 2012, it, one place or another, and I'm okay with it. There are some things about it I don't like, like this bar up top that it's pretty much useless most of the time. That's one of the reasons why my videos are 1610, is because all of these desktop environments... Uh, like GNOME and Unity, they have this bar up here that you can't do anything with. And I figure that little bit of extra vertical real estate on the screen makes up for that on a 1610 monitor. So if you've ever wondered why I have them, that's why I seek them out for that reason. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens as we roll along. And another important thing that we really can't overlook is the fact that they have dropped Mirror. Now, for those of you who are not... You know, noobs to Linux. Pretty much every Linux distribution out there ships with a display server called X Windows or X11. It has been around for a long, 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 long time. The Wayland project is trying to replace it. Wayland has actually shipped on Fedora already. Whereas the Mir project, which is trying to do exactly the same thing, replace the old X Windows system. Uh, they've never gotten the traction from the hardware people. And so, therefore, uh, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of glad that they're dropping the Mir project because uh, I always thought it was kind of a duplication of effort on their part. I mean, God bless you if you're one of the people that we're working on it because Lord knows we need to replace X. But X is an integral part of what Linux and Unix is. It is so wound through the system when you're dealing with any sort of graphic user interface, all of these applications talk to it. Boy, that's going to be really hard to move along. And they, I think they sort of tied Unity 8 with the Mirror environment, so that's probably one of the reasons that, number one, they haven't shipped it because there aren't, isn't a lot of hardware that supports it. And number two, uh, it's... Unity 8's weird. I mean, I've played with it a couple of times. I've actually gotten it to run a little bit. There's a preview that's available in uh, the versions of Ubuntu after 16.04. You can't really do much with it, but you can play with it. It's a nice, smooth environment, but it just really didn't catch the traction from the hardware community, uh, the people that build. And they're way more interested in Wayland, and uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But this is going to be very interesting to watch over the next few years. And we're going to say goodbye to the Unity desktop. Yeah. Now it's going to be with us until 2021 because Ubuntu 16.04 is supported until then. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with this latest release, which is coming along, Ubuntu 17.04. Right now it has a Unity 8 preview built into it. Will they take that out before the official release? Because if they're dropping support for it, why are you going to ship it in 1704? And would they, are they going to stick with Unity 7? Unity 7 has not changed a great deal since like Ubuntu 12.10. Uh, it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether we might get like maybe that Ubuntu 1710 
might have a version, uh, might have a GNOME desktop? Will they customize the GNOME desktop to make it look and act more like Unity, what we've got now? These are all questions that need to be asked. Will it just be a straight GNOME desktop like you would get on OpenSUSE and Fedora? Or are they going to follow Red Hat's lead? If you've ever seen the GNOME desktop that comes on CentOS or Red Hat, it's highly customized. And it actually looks a lot like uh, the original GNOME 2 desktop. It's GNOME 3, but it has the same look and feel with a bar at the bottom and the bar at the top and a more traditional menu. Is that what Ubuntu is going to do? Going to be very interesting to watch, gang. That's for sure. So thank you for watching the video. I certainly do appreciate it. This is something we're definitely going to be talking about. And it is late in the evening, and you may have noticed in the background that you hear snoring. That is my family sleeping. <laughs> I wanted to post a video about this and just uh, give you my thoughts on it. I will end up by saying I'm not a Unity hater, but I don't love it either. There are things I like about it. There are things I don't like about it. But Unity 7 in Ubuntu 14.04 and on has proven itself to be a very stable environment because it's had a lot of development. There's been seven years of development on Unity 7. Unity 8 was a radical departure uh, for a lot of reasons. And Unity 7, they've just been kind of having in maintenance mode, fixing a bug here and there. And so now the Unity 7 desktop on Ubuntu 16.04 or even like I'm running Ubuntu 14.04 on this particular computer, it's been a very stable experience, more stable than I've had from other desktops. So kind of sad to see it go. I like this proven technology. I like this stuff that I know is going to work and it's going to be there. And when they start changing things up, it makes me scratch my head. However, I did play around with the latest GNOME for a while. I actually had that running for a while back and that wasn't bad either. GNOME has come a long, long way since the original version which came out in 2010 so maybe it's just time maybe unity has run its course it's served its purpose and uh, the ubuntu folks are seeing that and they're deciding that they're going to let the official ubuntu flavors that come with all these other desktops satisfy people who don't like gnome and they're going to concentrate on making the best base possible and if that's what they're doing then it's going to be good Thank you for watching. Do check out Easy Linux on the web. If you'd like this wallpaper that you see in this video, it's available at easylinux.com and it's on the wallpapers page. Also check out Easy Linux on Facebook. We're talking about this and many other things over there right now. If you don't use Facebook, well, I understand, but if you do, be sure and come by and give it a like. And do check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great stories about Linux. And there's probably going to be several that come along that have to do with this huge change in the Ubuntu project. A big shakeup at Canonical. So anyway, thanks for watching, gang. We'll do it again soon.